I now invite you to enjoy this classic Dr. Groovy lesson. Hey folks, Dr. Groovy time. Scott Grove from Groovy Music Lessons. Right here, mandolin for guitar players. Just a 15 minute intro out of this sucker. And you ought to be able to figure it out enough to uh, go grab one and uh, actually start playing this sucker by yourself. Okay, so if you're a proficient enough guitar player, um, this will get you there probably more than anything. And also, you uh, aspiring fiddle players out there, it's tuned the same as a fiddle. So... Same thing, no frets on the fiddle. <laughs> Otherwise, the tuning's the same. For you guitar pickers, yeah, well, I got a little guitar here. This is my uh, first act guitar. Okay, so what it is, is it's these four strings here. And that's the way I want you to think of it, is the low string, okay, is your, what we got, E, A, D, G, right? Same as a bass guitar, four string bass guitar. Well, we're not going to use these two strings, but we have to use our guitar knowledge, because that's the way I'm billing this one, is for guitar players to learn how to play the mandolin the way they play. So we got E, A, D, G. Okay, E A D G. Now we're basically going to pretend like we're turning that guitar upside down, like we've all always wanted to be Hendrix. Turn our junk upside down. Now is your chance to do it. Um, unlike a lot of double stringed instruments, um, a mandolin is actually every string is simply doubled. There are no octaves going on. So you actually have identical strings twice. Okay, again, they are tuned E, A, D, G. I want you to think of this thing backwards and upside down, just like Hendrix would. Why? Because that's the way we're going to do it. E is on the bottom. E, A, D, G. Okay. E, A, D, G. E, A, D, G. So it's kind of looking at another guitar player across the room or directly across from you it's always kind of like um, people are like well if you're left-handed and you take a lesson from somebody it's a mirror image i think it's a lot easier to uh, like flip the screen around you know from that type of thing it's easier easier to learn um so things aren't poking all the way different ways but all you gotta do is those four strings off of a guitar and simply think of it as it well it's just kind of backwards if you actually turned it like Hendrix and played it this way, it's exactly like you would think it would be. Everything would be played like you would think. It's just, it's strung up, normal, you know, the notes would be correct. Okay, so what we have now, since we have uh, the luck anyway of having an E string down at the bottom like we do a guitar, okay, we have that E, A, D, G, everything is all the skinny strings are where the thick ones are, and all the thick ones are where the skinny ones are. But let's go for the G chord. Okay, what we have is our E string, like I said, we're familiar with. So what do we do? We go to the third fret on the E string. And we start looking like, you know, our regular G chord, but we have to build it backwards. And again, two of our strings are broke off. Okay, so we got the G, because it's A, the E string, sorry, up to the third fret. Then you think about it like a guitar player. Then you go, okay, on the A string, that's the second fret, which is a B note. And then on a G chord, we don't do anything else till we get to the high E or the B string, maybe. So the next two are just open because that's the way a G chord is if you're thinking like guitar. So it's like backward. Here's the low E, A string, D string, and the G string. So we got... So there's your G. So you would think of everything like that. You just 
figure it out real quick because it's just like a guitar and inverted like I showed you. And as guitar players, we know all you got to do is take the G chord and move it down one string. But what are we going to do this time if we're going to go to C? We got to go up. Everything's backwards. So we take these and we move them up for a C. Okay. So we got third fret here on our A string, second fret here on the D string, and open G string. But we can actually add a G note because it's there. <laughs> um, it's a fifth. We can add it on the E string just to fill it in or not. Because in C, there's also an open E, which is here. So, G, C, back to G. Now we need a D. Okay, just going to do a few chords and that, and a few licks, and that will get you on your way. I think you'll be able to play these things right out of the gate. Order you, you know, a cheapy uh, Washburn or something. This here's actually uh, the Epiphone, but these are like 600 bucks. So, you might want to go a little cheaper to check it out. I get an A series. It's the F series, which means a Florentine. It's just a body style. The A series is the one more of like a teardrop. Okay, so again, your G is just like you would think and like you would deduce. And C. Back to G. Now, D is kind of funky, but you just have to use your brain again like a guitar player. It's like, okay. If we use this E that we're so familiar with, okay, where we don't use that in a regular D chord on guitar because, but think about it, you got that high E string, which we basically have here on a guitar, and when we're playing a D chord, we play it on the second fret of the high E string, so we can use that. Is there an A in a D chord? That's the next string. Hmm. By golly, I think there is. We can use that if we want. What string is it? Actually, A all by itself. So it's good to go. So we have the F sharp. That is normally the second fret on your high E. It is still the second fret on our high E. <laughs> so we get to get a few times we get breaks like that. So, and then the A string, that's part of the D chord. Then the D, well, by golly, that, that, that better be part of the D chord. What do we got left? The G string. A is another part of the D chord, which is normally the second fret of our G string. Our G string's up here now. So we just end up with this. We got two fingers on the second fret on both sides. So we get our sus. Suspended second. There's our four <laughs> stuff. So you get to do that kind of thing. So if we have G, C, G, to D. patterns are going to be basically what sees us through. Um, remember this is a bluegrass instrument and it's not a ukulele. Okay, so playing it the way I was just doing was like a ukulele. Okay, so we would actually you play them on the up, up strokes. Like the snare drum, some bat and bat and bat and tat and tat and tat and tat and tat. Okay, it's like. Okay, so that's kind of the thing to remember. 
Um, a few little things just to get you guys going because I'm still a bad boy. I got five minutes left because of um, protecting my uh, my civil rights. <laughs> um, still allowed to be 15 minute videos, so hey, they keep me under control at least. Um, the things to um, remember are the typical um, things from okay, brown eyed girl stuff. If you're in G, which we hopefully are, okay, so we've got three and then two, then we're going to go, I'm calling them backwards, so three and two, then five and three, seven and five, backward, and of course C, the same thing. G7, of course, take your G note on your E string, flat it by two, go to your C, it's always nice, just bring that <laughs> third down, back to G. big scale let's do it in G is a long stretchy thing and then I basically have to get out of here and you got to learn it on your own again because of sad ass people on YouTube here's the scale backward okay if you are going backward which I am we're going on your high E string and we're gonna go that way backward three two go in the next string seven five three two next string seven five again three two seven five three seven um two seven five one last time okay three two next string is seven five three two and then seven five and if you do it really weird go backward it <laughs> okay so just think of things that way and you'll get all the chords just think of it upside down inverted and so forth and all the chords will come to you um, like if you're thinking about a it's like okay I got an a string on my guitar but I have to fret these two together we got a low E string but because it's upside down so So you, you just think of it just like Hendrix would have had to, or anybody else that plays just flat out upside down, your brain can do it pretty quick. And then, you'll get all your little lead things. my pick get my little jazz pick try to jazz pick they just happen to be laying around uh, I think maybe Wyatt sent me this one I can't remember who sent me what but thanks for it okay so mandolin is not as scary as you think again for who anybody who didn't see me when I did my um, video on electrifying it very cool and remember grommets little rubber grommets any ace hardware store or whatever always good for shutting up any instrument back here your 
anything with Bigsby's or up on the headstocks, that'd be your strats or whatever. So once again, Scott Grove, GroovyMusicLessons.com, Mandolin for Guitar Pickers. Okay, I'm going to try to turn this off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>